What's up everybody? I'm Joe Longo. This is 30 Days of Inspiration. Thank you for watching, for clicking play, for paying attention. Are you paying attention? Maybe? Thank you if you are. I'm at Sit Meditation Space with Jason Blau, owner of this beautiful space. Hey everyone. I just thought my Kundalini class, it's Wednesday, but not Wednesday when you're seeing this. But I teach here on Wednesdays at 12.15. You should come rock out the Kundalini with us. Or just come to any class that Jay has to offer. Yeah, do that. Do that. Do yeah. that. That will help everybody. And it will help you. So, Jason. Hey, Joe. Thanks for taking the time out to chat, to sit on your couch. What do you guys think about our, our set? We literally just kind of put, we, no, <clears throat> Jay, just set everything up so it would be <laughs> nice and ferns and plants and stuff. So I hope it's pleasing to your eyes. Um, so why, why are you here? What Why are you, are you here? here? Well, I'm here because you... I mean, you literally <laughs> go out every day to people who are inspiring. And the last... I think I'm at day 15 by the time you guys watch this. It's Later. been amazing. That'll it's be been amazing. Later. And I, I wanted to say thank you to you for the work that you're doing for all of us. You're promoting our businesses and the work that we all do and our love and passion. But uh, what's showing through is your love and passion for oh. creating and helping people to reach their, their dreams. And so... I'm sure you all agree that Joe's the man, but at the same time, thank you for including me in this and for uh, for being here and part of what we're doing. Yeah, well, thank you, you know, for allowing me to share in this beautiful space. It's it's a joy. Like, I love coming yeah, and sitting. Fun. and it's fun. We really, if you like to sing, come to do some Kundalini meditations, and we sing a lot. Um, and, you know, thank you for everything that you're doing and just having the courage to say, yeah, I'm going to open up the meditation space, yeah. which some people might say is pretty crazy to try to try. And you're doing it, so. Yeah, thanks. We're yeah. doing it. We're Let, doing it. We're here. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's jump into that. Cool. Why just a meditation space? Why not, if you're investing the money in a space, why not yeah. have the down dogs going? Like, yeah. What? Why? That's a great question, really. You know, we've been here a year now, and so we've really got a good sense of, of what our business is, what our core business is. And although we've recently added some things, our business is meditation. Meditation is not about stopping your mind, turning off your thoughts. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always say, congratulations, you're alive. Right? Mm -hmm. And so meditation is actually the complete opposite. It's about slowing down long enough to notice the thoughts and the sensations and the experience in which it's being created. And so you must meditate. I'll look right at the camera and say this. You must meditate. You must meditate as the foundation for your entire life. Mm -hmm. Yoga is the same way. It is a practice for living. Yoga is less about what happens on the mat and really what happens off. And mm -hmm. meditation is really similar in that, in that approach. It's just a different model. It's just a different business model. Our um, students that come here are looking for some level of stillness in mm -hmm. mind and body. And so we do offer some restorative yoga practices, but for the most part, um, it's a practice. Meditation is one of these things that it takes so much time. And before you give up, that's when the magic happens, right there, where it seems like, is this working? And then all of a sudden, everything shifts. Mm -hmm. And so we kept meditation, as hard as it is to convince people that they're gonna not sit there like this the whole time or stop their mind from wandering, um, it's a business, it's a great business. And, and, and the second piece of our business is the healing side because meditation helps you to heal and then you need to be supported through the body healing, the energetic body healing, the emotional body healing, and all the other stuff. So it's working. It's working good. And the more people that come in and learn about what we're doing, uh, the more people who seem to come back, mm -hmm. which you've seen in your classes. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And it always, if you've ever done Kundalini Yoga, sometimes it, it could be weird. So I love it when I come in, in the last two weeks, it's just, there's been a whole bunch of people just hanging out in this beautiful space and then meditating and then coming out and hanging out again. I'm just like, yeah, like yeah. you're, you're accepting the weirdness. 
Which it, 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 it's, it's not it weird, but taking that chance, that opportunity to open up and try something new. And I do often get a lot of people when I say, we're going to sing today, their eyes get really bright and like, what do you mean? What do you mean we're going to sing? And the same if I say, oh, we're going to chant mantra. The eyes get even wider because like, yeah. mantra? Yeah. Chanting? What yeah. is happening? Yeah. But everyone will at least try. And that's, I love that. I think the, you're hitting the nail on the head. If we could get them through the door to realize that the singing, the chanting, the mantra, the, you know, bringing your awareness to a part of your body, a sound, whatever it is, is all part of what meditation is, a single pointed focus. And so at the end of meditation, you should feel calm and relaxed. And the way to feel calm and relaxed is to let all of the noise fade into the background. Like a good photo. You have a focal. I'll speak to you in your language. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You take a great photo. You put something in the, you tell me, something in the foreground and then the back becomes blurred. Mm -hmm. You still are aware, right? And so by doing kundalini, a uh, practice of singing and chanting beautiful ancient mantras, which sounds like music you might hear on the radio today, people feel great at the end of that. Mm -hmm. They move the energy through the body, whether they know what that means or not. They know that they, they, lay, they leave feeling different than they came, which was tight and tense and stressed, and now everybody's sort of, oh, I just did kundalini. I'll float out of here. Right, a little loosey-goosey. <laughs> yeah. You know, with a nice, if you're a runner, kind of like a runner's high. You know, yeah. you get that. Same after like a vigorous yoga class. You know, you get that, that little burst, that... that yeah. Your endorphins, everything's I remember, firing. I remember taking my first Kundalini class with you downtown at Palo Santo, mm -hmm. right? And it was myself and another guy, and I think it was you who said you may feel high when you leave, but I don't know if it was the runner's high you were. You were <laughs> no, no, to, no, just returning to high. Yeah, just get Just high. the high state. And I tell, you know, in my classes and in my workshops that I teach, I tell people that's why I started, that's why I kept going back to class. Because I would go into class, I would do this practice, and I would feel as if I smoked something, I took something, I did something to alter my consciousness. But all I did was change my breath. Change your breath. It's, I may have held my arms up in the air for a crazy amount of yeah. time, but it changed everything. Totally. And it made me feel very euphoric. Yeah. And like I was connected with everything. Yeah. Like it wasn't like there was a separation between us. We were all this beautiful, energetic organism functioning as one trying to raise our vibration and the vibration totally. of everything around us. And I think that's why this place works. Because we're not a specific brand of meditation. We are meditation and mindfulness. Teacher-led or guided, however you want to say it, but every teacher is different here. We all come from some level of um, practice or style or lineage of some sort. And everybody brings a certain level of practice to the table. And our students, at least a lot of the feedback that I've heard, is that they love the variety. Mm -hmm. Some days they're feeling like they just need to relax. And they might come to a yoga nidra, like a conscious sleep where they put bolsters underneath them and just chill and veg out for 45 minutes. And other times they're feeling like, you know what, I need to get really clear on what it is that I want and start chanting in a way to bring prosperity and abundance into my life. Or... Maybe my path is a traditional Buddhist practice in which I invoke a holy being into my practice and share um, the, the, the good and the bad that I'm doing and, and, and really try to build in some great karma. It all is the same purpose at the end of the day, which is to relax mm -hmm. and to realize that all you, we really have is this present moment. And we're not guaranteed the next, mm -hmm. all right? I know this, like, ceiling's reinforced, but we're, you know, we will have to leave this building at some point. And so you might as well do what you love in this moment. And the only way to figure out what that is is to quiet the noise. Right. All the noise that you can't, you won't, you definitely should not, right? And we believe those stories mm -hmm. because that's what we always have done. We believed that whatever our mind is telling us is true. Yeah. There's this great quote, and I don't know who it's from, because I know I've read it in some Kundalini books that Yogi Bhajan had said it, but I don't know if it's actually a Yogi Bhajan quote. And it's, prayer is when you talk to God 
meditation is when God talks to you. Right. I've heard it um, in the same way, but meditation is when you listen. You talk, you know, speak to God or ask God, um, in, in, you know, in a religious practice. And, and we're, we're spiritual here, which means you can be religious. Mm -hmm. Most uh, people who are religious seem to be really spiritual. Right. You know, spiritual, it, it, you know, has, I think, a, a really interesting connotation uh, these days where people say, nah, I can't practice meditation. I'm not religious and and what is spiritual what does it mean to, to live a spiritual life and there's a lot of you know parts to that mm -hmm. right um, you have to live ethically right like you have to really you have to study and practice you have to meditate you have to be nice and kind to people the golden rule it's the golden rule pretty much it's the golden rule and that's why I love the practice of Buddhism because they tend to separate silo almost all the great my teacher says this all the time silos the great religions and what what Buddhism says is well great but you're either practicing or you're not they sort of draw the line this way and um, that's why you practice Kundalini you get up and you do your practice that's why you create abundance or what at least seems to be abundant on Instagram sure sure <laughs> well what I've been really you know jumping onto that topic have been noticing in my life is I'm extremely abundant but as I've been practicing over the years, I've never been clear and very precise with what I want to bring in as abundance. Right. So sure, I'm abundance. I live in a great house with awesome rent because I know who who owns the house. Yes. So I'm blessed, you know, to have this, and it's affordable. Um, have a amazing friends and amazing opportunities and I get to create all these amazing things so the my life is very abundant but I've also have lived this life thinking like oh well, whatever money is whatever not really focusing on it and I need to you know because the bank account yeah. is not big at all there are months where I'm like how am I gonna pay my bills you know I like Which, the one that says um, dear Jason, your bank account is below the limit. And I say thank you because this is already information that I have. <laughs> you know, like, you know? I get it. It's, it's, it's a, I sometimes say it's a moment by, by minute by minute, moment by moment opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. To continue to grow. Right. That would be replacing the word issue or problem, right? Mm. And so, uh, by the way, our words and our thoughts are killing us out there, right? We're, 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 we spend all day... Uh, thinking about the things that we don't want and we want to know why they're still coming into our lives. Right, because it's what we're putting out. So what the practice now, the, uh, the way I've been trying to change things is every morning with my meditation, I'll have a little affirmation that I am so happy and thankful that I'm making X amount of money. Right. But I, I'm now putting an actual yeah. number yeah. there. So instead of just saying, I am so happy and thankful that I'm abundant, I'm yeah. being more specific. Instead of, you know, because again, the life is abundant, right. but my bank account doesn't look well, abundant. Well, you're so right about <laughs> this because what I've learned and learned through this practice or even watching the movie, The Secret, and the way in which you sort of manifest things is that you have, you can have anything you want, anything, if you do the following. You must be clear mm -hmm. and specific about what you want, I including even the time frame. I need that money by Tuesday, 5 p.m., like... I that, that needs to come right now. Like right, the, bills, right. yeah. the bills are due. And then you, once you get really, really clear, you have to be positive and nice to other people. Oh, and, and then here's the, here's, the, here's the kicker. You actually have to show up and do the right work in order to obtain that. And um, I know like in this business now, I spend so much time doing things that aren't bringing me the money. And I ask, where's all of the money? I have all of these things that we're doing, but why isn't it all translating? Why doesn't mm -hmm. it sync up? Why why aren't I going on the fancy vacations and you know doing all the fun fancy stuff? And so I'm with you. How 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 do you bridge that gap and 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 make it all work? Mm -hmm. And keep putting out inspiring <laughs> quality content that will get other people to be inspired and do what they want to do. And understand that doing what you love is great, but it's also a lot of work. Well, 
Yeah. And it's a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. It's a lot of time alone figuring out what needs to be done and planning and, and creating a strategy. Yeah. But like you, there's, I mean, you have people helping you here, but there really isn't a big support staff here. It's not like you're walking into sure. an office and you're like, hey, Suze, hey, right. Bob, right. what's up? Right. You know, same with me. Like I will go on a photo shoot, I have a great time, and then I go home and then it's me in my studio and I'm right. editing and working. Right. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, so it's, it's, you know, you can't have it both ways. So I spent the majority of my career in medical device sales, making great money, getting up every morning, wearing a suit, traveling all over, you know, from here to your hometown of Northeast PA mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, working for, for a corporation that set goals and um, expectations and there were a lot of rules. And there wasn't a lot of creativity. In fact, you're sort of put into a box, stay where you are. And for me, that wasn't fulfilling, even though the money was fulfilling the bank account. Actually, I never really worried. I wasn't making millions, but I was doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I always like to say, is it better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all? And so this is a total shift. You were in corporate, you know, most people, I hear this all the time. How do you get out? How do you, how do you, how do you make it work? You can teach 30 yoga classes and do 25 shoots and I don't know, maybe go to the bathroom once or twice a day. Like, how do you fit it all in and make mm -hmm. it all work? And so, um, you know, leaving that industry and now being out for a few years, I don't feel the same pressures that I felt with meeting the quotas and, and the monthly targets, but there's still a lot of pressure on paying your bills. You gotta find a way to balance it, mm -hmm. as you said, and to, to make it work if you care that much about the work that you're doing. All right, yeah. now you just have to keep on working. Keep on working. And what I've learned is it's a little bit of everything. You gotta do a little bit of creating awareness, a little bit of selling, a little bit of trial and error with certain products or processes, and always be seeing what works, always changing to adapt to what is really needed out there. And hopefully you deliver a product or a service that people want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One good thing though that I have noticed in this Instagram world that we're living in, in the change of the whole exposure, is collaborations yeah. and the collaborations make more sense because it's actually two people coming together not to say i need a headshot i need this and i'll tell the world that yeah. you were great but instead saying i'm doing this and you're doing this if we collaborate together yeah. and create something awesome it will benefit both of us not just the one person coming in and saying yeah. oh my goodness there's a yoga festival happening and you should photograph it right. and you can come for free right no yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't work. But if there's a way that I can collaborate with that yoga festival to create something awesome right. that benefits everyone, then that makes sense. Well, that's just it, right? I mean, in order to help, in order to get what you want, you got to help somebody get what they want. And so if both parties are helping each other get what they want, it's called karma. It works. Right. You have to put out what you want to get back mm -hmm. in its simplest form. And really, it's how may I serve? How may I serve? You know, there's no other way. They say that there's really only two reasons for living, and that's one is to experience everything that life has to offer. It's the pain and the pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's this idea of impermanence. Nothing is permanent, you know. Uh, my tattoo reads, this too shall pass, mm -hmm. right? A happy person, you say that, is going to become sad. A sad person may become, become happy. And so that's one. You gotta just live it, experience mm -hmm. it, L let the bank account be. I didn't say throw all caution to the wind and be aloof or not care about it. Pay attention to it and find out why is the fear and worry coming as a result of not having what you think you need to have mm -hmm. in order to complete your mission, to carry out your passion. And the second thing is to be happy. <laughs> be happy. I mean, there's really no guarantees in life. The average lifespan might be 70 plus years but that doesn't mean that's your average. Right, exactly. And so you could spend it dressing up in a suit, and I have plenty of friends that do that and are really happy. Or you can follow your dreams and be a great photographer and help people um, express themselves in a creative way that makes them look unique on Instagram, but also makes them feel unique inside. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. There's a way to do it. And, you know, my whole little tagline from the time I started, it was capturing the light within. Yeah. Because I really feel that when I'm creating images of you or a tree, my goal is really to capture that inner Absolutely. light. For as, yeah. as woo-woo as that sounds. You know, I that's think, my goal. I want to capture the real you, right. not the make-believe. This is awesome. Look at what I have here. And by the way, I think Instagram's a great thing if, if, if we take away some of the desire to have what everybody else has. Right. Like, Joe, that guy's got it going on. If I, if I got a Canon 500,000, whatever <laughs> XL you have, I could be awesome too, but... but but what about recognizing what you have? And, and, and my brother always says, y you don't have it, but, but you don't have it yet. So the ego is saying, you want what you want and you want it right now. Mm -hmm. And that's the letting go of what the expectation is that we talk about in meditation. You let go of the attachment to the expectation, mm -hmm. to the way it's always been, right? And then without judging yourself, you say, okay, let me come back to this moment where I can make decisions that actually matter. Mm -hmm. instead of what might be or should be or could be in the future. Right. You know? And being grateful for all that you currently have at this moment. When you slow down long enough to notice, uh, we do gratitude at the end of the practice mm -hmm. in most of at least my classes. And what's fascinating about gratitude, once you slow down and you bring one thing into mind, usually several things come into mind. And they're never big. No. They're never big. It's like, thank you for letting me get up today and for breathing and having connection with people and friendships and you know a lot of the last couple of guests have talked about community and it's mm -hmm. been awesome to hear that that's what matters to people they want to feel a part of a grassroots effort to make change rather than spew dirty language and hate and victimization they want to come together towards a common goal set a common intention as you said raise their vibration and set out a more positive frequency and let people connect to that. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like there's so much going on in the world that we just want to point fingers. But at the end of the day, you can't change anyone. And so the only thing you can do is change yourself and mm -hmm. follow your own authentic path and live righteously. There's not much to it. Right. And then hopefully that will inspire anyone that may see you to start doing the same. By the way, it doesn't make it easy. It's no. easy <laughs> to go to work. And I'm not saying that to, it's hard, everybody's working hard, but it's hard to believe in yourself and not listen to everybody that says, nah, you shouldn't be doing this, mm -hmm. or hey, money is really important, or, or come along and join me with this, and, and that's something you have to say no to for the sacrifice and the, for the love of what you're doing. Right. It's, it's an amazing, tricky world. It's just what we call Earth School. It's just one lesson after the next. Right. And you either take it and you learn and grow from it or you get it again in a more difficult way. Mm -hmm. I say you either let go now and it's hard or you let go later and it's even harder. Right. You know, your choice. You get to choose. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, thank you yeah, for thank you, uh, taking the time to sit on your couch cool. and uh, chat with me. So before we go... Can you leave our wonderful friends out there watching one little nugget of sure. advice to keep them moving forward? Just any piece of advice. Any piece of advice to keep them, you know, someone moving forward in the direction of their dreams, goals, passions, bliss. Yeah. All that stuff. Start. Start now. Let go of the expectations and the desired outcomes and follow your heart. You know exactly what to do all of the time. You just have to trust and believe that everything is unfolding just the way that it is. The thing about trust is you have to trust 100% of the time, not just when things are going good, mm -hmm. but when things are going bad. That's the best time to let go and just believe that you are, you are, you are in your path. Mm -hmm. You are where you need and should be. Love yourself, man. Ah, beautiful. And love others. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. So just start, keep going, and keep going, yeah, keep going. and keep going, yeah. and keep on going a little bit more. Thank you again. Thanks, brother. Sit meditation space. A link Jay up all around someplace. Come take a class. Somewhere. And I'll see you tomorrow. See you, everyone. Awesome, brother. Thanks, man. <laughs>